This is Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. I hope you enjoyed this critical thought, your daily discussion on game design. Hello and welcome to today's critical thought. Before we begin, thank you to 824 subscribers here on YouTube. Hope you're enjoying the content here. Be sure to like and subscribe as we make our way up to 900. If you haven't done so already, be sure to vote for the Let's Play 800 vote, which right now the choices are between Hitman 2016 play, a look at some of the best casual games from PopCap, and a series on some of the games I've just not been able to get into. Also, you have until the end of October if you'd like to support Game Wisdom's Patreon campaign and get in on some early bird pricing. That's going to end October 31st, and we'll go back to the normal pricing afterwards. Now, as you can see, I have two um, weird things going on right here. If I can get the pointing right, there we go. But it will make sense in a few minutes. It is Sunday as we're recording, and I'm sure most of you right now are playing Sid Meier Civilization 6. I'm not simply because I don't have the money to buy it. I put in for a press copy and fingers crossed if I'm able to get it. But Civilization is one of those very interesting series and we could dedicate critical thoughts to just about each and every one of the games. But I want to talk about something a little interesting and different that I found about Civ. Now, of course, those of you who don't know, Sid Meier Civilizations is the very much long-running PC series. It's one of the games that I think has become an ex accessible way into the 4X or grand strategy genres. It's sort of between the fast-paced or traditional turn-based strategy, or the super complex grand strategy games like Europa Universalis, Masters of Orion, etc. And Civilization has certainly carved out its own little niche as an accessible take on what's commonly seen as a very complicated genre. Now of course, this is my limited edition uh, box of Civilization 3. This is actually where I got into Civilization. I remember walking into GameStop back in the day and I, the box basically just called to me. I think they were putting it on sale because no one was buying it. And so I picked it up and that was my first real introduction into Civilization and of course Firaxis. Hopefully this thing won't start making noise but we'll see. Now Civilization, obviously Sid Meier Civilization developed by Sid Meier. And, as we said, we are up to the sixth iteration, not counting, of course, spin-offs, expansions, mobile games, etc. The Civilization series, as its basic foundation, has stayed the same throughout the years. You lead a Civilization from the Stone Age to the Modern Age, and try to be numero uno. <laughs> I don't know if you just heard that ping from the tin there, but if I leave it on my little the desk corner here, it starts, I guess it must be vibrating. <laughs> but as I said, civilization again deals with the concepts of military, culture, religion, economy, and while the series has grown and changed, its foundation has remained the same. And that's when that picture up there goes in. For those of you who are among a very rare group who are savvy enough at video games to be watching this video, but not savvy enough at science fiction to know who that is, first, thank you for watching this series and subscribing to Game Wisdom. That is, of course, from Doctor Who, considered the longest running science fiction series developed by the BBC, and has earned itself quite a lot of fans. And to talk more about the series and what makes it so special, there are more videos and quote-unquote Whovians out there who will be able to do that more justice than I am. But the point and why these two are here right now, one of these days I'll get the pointing, right? I think it's just because I'm not angled in this chair, is the show's trademark, I guess, twist, and that is regeneration. It's basically a fancy way of replacing an actor. 
But unlike other shows, when actors are replaced and the show just goes on without skipping a beat, you know, Bewitch, or when children go up to bed on a sitcom and then a completely different child comes down the next morning, when Doctor Who has a regeneration, the show changes. New writers are usually brought in, the stories are changed, the overall tone and pacing is oftentimes altered. At the same time, the show's foundation is always remains the same. You're not going to see a Doctor Who series where it becomes a, a grizzled crime drama in New York where he's a defense attorney. But the show has changed enough that the different series and the different Doctors have their own fan bases. You can see a big difference between, for instance, Doctor number 11 and what we're at with Doctor 12. Now, of course, with that said, for hardcore fans, you know, there's an, a whole argument about those the numbering. But for those of you who don't know that, you don't need to know that for this critical thought. But what I want to talk about is how, in a sense, civilization is almost like the Doctor Who of the video game industry. And to explain why, you need to look at its development cycle. Past the first two civilizations where Sid Meier had the lead designer role, Civs 3 through 6, and we could even say, ooh, excuse me, their other games have had different lead designers, with Sid Meier taking more of a director uh, slash kind of consultant role with the games. With Civilization 3, for instance, it was designed by Jeff Briggs. Civ 4, Soren Johnson, Civ 5, John Schaefer, and Civ 6, I have to pull this up, Ed Beach. So what that means is while the foundation of the game has remained the same, the lead designers have each had a different mark on the series. And this is different from other games and how they've grown. When we look at other series, there's usually two kinds of growth. There is the iterative process where, again, the game will usually stay the same. There may be minor improvements, but you're still getting the same basic game with each title. You know, Assassin's Creed, Dead Space, Call of Duty, Madden, etc. The other kind is more of an evolutionary growth, and this is when a series makes a grand change. The move from 2D to 3D with Mario, Castlevania, Zelda, um, when Resident Evil went from survival horror to action horror, these are when the series makes a very big change, and then that becomes the status quo. But with Civilization, they've more or less followed the Doctor Who route. The foundation stays the same, but there are major changes that affect each game in the series. Again, with Civilization 3 to 6, we could see how the series has altered and changed itself in different ways. There have been attempts at fixing the infinite city sprawl, and of course another famous saying, the Stack of Doom. Whereas you could just combine all your military units into one unit or a stack on the map and have it just kill everything. And with each civilization there's been changes and growth in different areas. The introduction of city-states, espionage, differing religions, the idea of being able to have a policy tree and essentially grow your Civ that way. I think that was introduced in Civ 5, but it could have been introduced in Civ 4. Civilization Beyond Earth, even though it wasn't considered an official game, had a completely different tech tree. And when something that was more organic or freeform that we saw in other 4X games. But the point is that with each civilization, it essentially becomes its own thing within that franchise. It may be a little hard to see in the back here. I'll try and angle it just right, but you can sort of see the difference in the styles there in terms of graphics. And I just love the greatest strategy game of all time, because we say that about each Civilization game, in a sense. And this has also, just like with Doctor Who up there, has essentially created generations of fans. 
with Doctor Who, for instance, there are people who only see Doctor Four or Doctor Number Four as their real Doctor, and it basically goes with like the fans and when you grew up, and that also affects their perception of what is a Doctor Who show. And again, we don't have the time here to talk about that today. Doubly so, as the show is all about time travel. And the same goes for Civilization. Because each game has its own lead designer, its own unique spin, there are different debates as to what is, you know, the true Civilization. Like I said, I got in with Civ 3, but I've heard a lot of fans talk about their love of Civilization 2. And of course, with each new Civilization game, it immediately gets compared to the previous one. Everything that it does differently, or what's wrong with it, what's right, etc. Same as Doctor Who up there. But what makes this a fascinating series and something to explore more is how, again, we don't really see this in other areas of game development. Usually, the lead designer on a series remains throughout the length of that series. And even if things get shuffled around and maybe a new studio comes in, they still try to keep things with the previous game. With Batman Arkham Origins, for instance, while it was developed by a different studio, and we could see that, much of the DNA in the Foundation remained the same. There is very little in terms of differences, with exception to Detective Vision. But when it comes to like grand series, and Civilization has certainly earned that moniker. I mean, no pun intended, it has really stood the test of time. I think it may be considered the longest running series on the PC at this time. But we don't see this kind of lead developer switch out in other areas. Imagine if it was announced that the next Super Mario game for the Nintendo Switch would be lead designed by Hideo Kojima. That would be terrifying and awesome all at the same time. But with Civilization, it's become almost a tradition. Each Civ game introduces a new lead designer, and their own design approaches and preferences sort of become absorbed by the Civilization brand. And while I don't have it on me, with the Civilization manuals, they feature parts where the lead designer talks about their role and what they were thinking about while designing the game. And it is a fascinating read. I, I really need to find my copy of the Civilization 3 manual. I have no idea where it is right now. Because there is a part where Jeff Briggs talked about. Civ 4, I think, featured a piece by Soren Johnson. I'm sure Civ 5 has something about from John Schaefer. But it's fascinating when you hear how these developers and their backgrounds become a part of the Civilization franchise. With Civilization 6's designer, Ed Beach, I know there is an interview that he did where he talked about having a background more in board game and tabletop games and how he used that while approaching Civilization VI. And again, no other series has had this kind of change and growth. And just like Doctor Who, I think it's really lend itself to helping it stand out and keep relevant with each new iteration. And again, while each new series does feature elements from previous ones, it's the lead designer's approach has really altered it. With Civilization VI, for instance, it's still keeping with the one unit per tile, which I think Civ V was the first one to feature a hex base form instead of just tiles or just places on the map like previous ones. And again, we could spend who knows how long on each Civilization. For those of you watching this, if you can somehow get a hold of Sid Meier, I would really love to talk to him, or anyone who's worked on Civilization. If you're a fan, if you're a fan of Game Wisdom, you've probably heard our multiple conversations with John Schaefer, where we talked about design and just fascinating talks. I also spoke with Soren Johnson when we talked about um, Off-World Trading Company, and there is a Building the Game piece here on the YouTube channel about that. But we're going to wrap it up here. Again, Civilization is just a fascinating series. And for those of you watching this, I'm curious, what are your favorite Civ games? Be sure to leave them below. And for those of you playing Civilization VI, I'm curious as to how you're finding that one. Especially if you're either a new fan 
or a returning one from the previous titles. But we're going to wrap it up here. Once again, thank you to 824 subscribers here on YouTube. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe and let your friends know as we are now making our way up to 900 and then 1,000. Be sure to subscribe here and check out GameWisdom.com for daily pieces. Other than that, I am once again Josh Beister from GameWisdom.com. I'll let you look at my lovely tin box one more time. Probably one of the big casualties of moving to digital. We lose these awesome boxes, but again, that's another topic. So, once again, thanks again for watching this Critical Thought, your daily dose of game design discussions. I'll be back tomorrow with more great content here on GameWisdom.com and on the YouTube channel. Have a great Sunday, and get back to playing Civilization. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and of course share with your friends, it always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out Game-Wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GWBicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon. Hello, welcome to a after <laughs> credits, I guess, continuation of my part looking at Civilization and Doctor Who. The reason why I wanted to make this was after the video was done recording, I wanted to see if I could find those manuals, and I did. I also found this lovely thing that I wanted to bring up. This was included in the Civilization 3... Um, collector's edition here. A little letter from Sid Meier. Back when limited editions were awesome, as you can see. But, there's one other thing I wanted to show. I did find my physical manuals of Civ 3 and Civ 4. And while Civ 3, I didn't see the a design section, there is an afterwards here from Soren Johnson. I'm not going to show the whole thing, obviously, because it's kind of lengthy. But again, one of the joys of the physical editions is being able to read and see this lovely stuff. And I would love for more developers to do afterwards and post more discussions on their games. It's one of the things I love about when we do the podcasts with many developers. But that's going to do it for this quick little after credits scene. Once again, I'm Josh Beiser. See you all tomorrow, and I don't think this will be a regular occurrence, but we'll see. Take care.